Hey, what's up? It's your friendly neighborhood puppy chaser. We're going to combine two videos today into one. Uh, I'm going to ride the horse for a little bit, and while I'm doing horse and dog stuff, I will also talk to you guys a little bit about the different animal control agencies. Um, first of all, I just wanted to show you, this is how my wagon turned out after I painted it. Isn't that cool? I think it looks pretty awesome. See, I got my thin blue line. I'm already having him do some work. He's been hauling some hay for me. He's a good boy. Yes, he's a good boy. What a good boy. I think my flash is on. That's really weird. Let me turn that off. There you go. <laughs> good boy. I didn't know the flash was on. Sorry, buddy. But yeah, so this is pretty cool. And uh, I did... He's named after a character on Blue Bloods, Edith Jenko. Uh, she's married to Officer Reagan. I had a dog named Reagan, so I thought it'd be really cute to name him Jenko. And uh, that's her badge number. So I put that on here, and I did a cute little badge on there with paw print. All right, I'm going to switch over to my spy cam. Okay, I lied. So my spy cam wasn't really working that great. I had it on my hat, and for whatever reason, it was kind of glitchy and stuff, so... Oh well, I did actually work the horse today. I groomed him and worked him, and he did pretty good. He was a little less than cooperative, but I don't blame him, because it's cold, and <laughs> we haven't worked in a little bit, so he said, "Ah, work! I have to work! Anyway, speaking of work, I'm getting ready to harness this guy up, because we're about to go do the wagon thing, which he absolutely hates, but I don't care, because it's his job. So, uh, let's get him all harnessed up and stuff. Okay, here he is, all harnessed up. So, this is where the shafts come through, and this is what the traces connect to. So, we're getting ready to go to work. Alright, we see he is all hooked up and hating his life <laughs> to the wagon, his really awesome Officer Jenko wagon. You ready, buddy? Please somebody else adopt me because I don't like this person anymore. <laughs> I don't want to live here. She makes me work. So Castle's eating grass right now, but um, I'm trying to decide if I want to give him any more hay today. He's been wasting a lot of hay, because he just flips it out. But I guess I can give him a little bit. Do, 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 do. 
Let's just give him like a flake. Keep him happy. I was giving him more than this. Okay, all fine. We gotta cross the bridge. So this is where I want it to slow. Slow. Good. Alright. There we go. There we go. <laughs> hey, buddy! It's really pretty sunset. Isn't this a really nice sunset? Look at that. That's so pretty. <laughs> Castle's in his little house, eating dinner. Jank goes over there playing with the jolly ball. Anywho, so I'll just go over what I was going to go over with you guys. This is unscripted, and I have a really hard time speaking from the top of my head. I do much better if I can write it down. I'm a better writer than I am a speaker, so I usually write down what I want to say and then go off of my points that I've written down. So we're going to try and go off the top of my head here. <laughs> Look at him, he's so cute. Uh, so the differences between the departments. Usually you'll have a police department or sheriff's department um, or a standalone agency. Obviously that they can be run out of public works as well, but I only have experience with police and with the standalone. With the police agency, things that you need to be aware of. Police are held to a higher standard, so it's written in policies, usually, um, your conduct. So it's hard to get away with stuff. <laughs> you can get away with more if you're working from a humane society. Even with your sheriff's department, because they're mainly run out of the humane societies, it's a lot easier to get away with certain things. But with the police department, you definitely have to be careful about how you dress, how you act, who you talk to, what you say. But you have you have a chain of command. You have your officers, you have your sergeants, you have your lieutenants, you have your captains, and so on and so forth. They also, if you're working from a police department, you're probably not going to have shelter duties, which I appreciate. I don't like doing kennel work. That's not my job. I want to be out in the field doing the animal control stuff. So I want to be with a police agency. Even if it's stricter, I am proud to work for a police department. So that's what I'm looking for. If you're working for a humane society, you will almost always have to do shelter stuff. You're gonna have to clean kennels, you're gonna have to be a receptionist, and I'm just not, that's not really my thing. I don't like doing that. But if you're cool with that, I mean, go ahead. It's to each their own. Then you have the standalone agency, which is, you know, whatever agency is just run from the county. The county gives them the power. They're not with a department. They're technically not law enforcement, but they're given the power to write citations and stuff like that and investigate cruelty. You have to be careful with them, even though sometimes you can get away with a little bit more because it's not necessarily a law enforcement agency. Janko, over here! Come on! You have to be careful because they think they're a little bit more than they are. They're wannabe cops and so they'll take their power and abuse it and I've seen it especially with the agency I was with where it was a standalone agency they didn't work for any particular department they were kind of their own thing and they definitely abused their power and people did not like the animal welfare officers at all they were harassed they're just they're in it for how much money can we get out of these people without really caring about the animals or the people and you know me I'm all about serving the public 
I serve people and I serve their the animals. But it is all about that. Oh, he's drinking the horsey water. <laughs> hey Jinko. Hey the buddies. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between animal welfare officer, animal services officer, and animal control officer. Animal welfare is pretty much the bottom of the bottom. I do not like animal welfare officers, and that's what I was considered was animal welfare, and I hated it. You know why? Because these are the bleeding heart people that are, let's say we're no kill because it looks good on paper, but we, you know, they're gonna leave the feral cats. Like, save the feral cats, let them be feral cats, but at the same time deny them treatment or euthanization because, you know, we don't want to kill anything. Is it snowing, really? It is. It's sleeting. What? What is this? What? What is this? Okay. <laughs> I got a nice sunset and I'm getting pelted by little drops of sleet. This is interesting. Definitely not, not what I was expecting. Um, animal services. Well, okay, we'll just go back on animal welfare. I don't take them very seriously. They are pretty much the bleeding hearts. I don't like animal welfare people. They oftentimes will, will put animals before people and that's not where I stand. I think people should always come first. And then you have animal services, which is a little bit better. Animal services is just basically that. Um, they provide services for whatever your animal needs may be. Uh, I found animal services doesn't technically do wildlife. They typically don't do wildlife, rather. So, um, not really a big fan of animal services. I will take animal services over welfare any day. Now, animal control, that's where I'm at. We're a little bit more hardcore. We go headfirst into any situation. Typically, we're the ones that have our tasers out, and it doesn't matter how we have to handle a situation as long as it gets handled. That means if we walk into a situation with some aggressive dogs, we're not going to be afraid to tase them, pepper spray them, or you know get get them on the catch pole and choke them out because they're being stupid. So we're we're kind of the more badass, harsher of the animal services, whatever animal people. So definitely pay attention to your department and to your title. Now let's talk location. I'm sure I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, let's, let's talk about the location wise. Wildlife. If you want to do wildlife like I do, your best bet is a city, which is why I'm usually saying you'll be with a police department. You should go with city because city people are not wildlife people at all. They are the, oh, there's a raccoon in my trash can. There's opossums around my garage. I just don't like them. Even though I live right next to a wood line, I just can't. Like right here, this, this is county. This is country and people are more likely going to deal with the groundhog via shotgun than they are to call animal control to come handle the problem. So I am very much into wildlife. I want to work in the city. I want to deal with bats and all that stuff. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, county, again, they're pretty much going to be handling dogs. And a lot of counties don't even do cats because there's just so many of them, the feral cats or whatever, that they just say, look, if you have a cat problem, contact a local trapper and hope that they'll gonna, they're going to come get them for you. Look at that, so pretty. <laughs> My, my phone is not doing this justice. I'm using my little phone camera and it's really not even doing this justice. It's so pretty. And you can't even see Castle, but he's in there. In his little house. Hey, buddy! Dork. <laughs> my camera doesn't do well at night. It's so crappy. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope that that, uh, that made sense to you guys. I explained that. I am so bad at coming off the top of my head. If it's not scripted, I struggle for words. Really do. Ooh. What you hearing? You hearing the popping? Somebody shooting out here? Maybe? You're standing all weird. What are you standing weird for? 
All right, well, that is pretty much that. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. I do try my best to get to comments. Sometimes I don't get the alert that your comment has popped up, but if I see it three weeks later, I am still going to respond, I promise. Even if I'm three weeks late, I will respond to your comment. So, any questions or if you want further elaboration, like I said, I am a better writer than I am speaker, so I will be able to compose my thoughts a little bit better with that. For now, this is ACO Twiggy calling 1042. Till next time.